Hello and welcome to Encore. Today we're taking a look at the photography, street art and graphic journalism that's painting a picture of contemporary Brazil. As the host of the last World Cup and now the Olympic Games, the country's been thrust into the spotlight. Street artist Suriani joins me in the studio to talk about Brazil's moment in the sun. Rafael Suriani, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. You currently produce your work here in France, actually in the streets of Paris, but you started in your hometown of Sao Paulo. Yes. What is the difference between making work here in France and in Brazil? Uh, there's a big difference because Sao Paulo, my uh, hometown, is a big industrial and modern city, and we don't have the same historical architecture and heritage we have here. So street art is, I would say, more welcome in Sao Paulo because it's, it's become part of our cultural identity. Well, without further ado, let's take a look at some of your work. Now, as we can see, some of those portraits feature drag queens, images that perhaps bring up questions of gender identity, queer identity. Yes. How would you say the situation for LGBT rights is in Brazil right now? Depends on this part of Brazil you go. And even in, in big cities, we've seen uh, recently a lot of manifestations against equality of rights since 2013, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of... Um, religious groups that are fighting, fighting against these rights. They created a project to, uh, how do I say, fix homosexual, homosexuals and fit them into the, their morals. So that's why I decided to talk about this in my art and in the streets and show uh, that diverse and celebrate diversity. And how is that kind of thing received in Brazil? It was very well received, actually. The, the LGBT community is very big and articulated, so I was quickly invited to, to do works in, in nightclubs and, and LGBT festivals. It was, the, the reception was very good. And you mentioned Sao Paulo being a city of street art that's quite well known for <clears> it now. <throat> Another artist who hails from your ho hometown is Eduardo Cobra. He has been charged with creating a mural for the Olympic Games in Rio, and it could be the largest one in the world at 3,000 square meters. It depicts five faces for five continents. It's a celebration of diversity and universality. Now, Eduardo Cobra is someone who was arrested in the past for doing graffiti in the street, but now he's being celebrated, part of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. How do you think approaches to art have changed in Brazil in recent years? I think uh, graffiti, more specifically, has become, as I said, uh, as, uh, an important cultural trait of Sao Paulo and Brazil. So many of the artists who started doing illegal graffiti now, they are commissioned for big projects like this one. The most famous ones would be uh, Os Gêmeos, the twins, that have, have brought Brazil into the international scene. For me to see this evolution is very rewarding, that, that this recognition of mural and graffiti art. Well, as well as Brazilian artists being celebrated in their home country, we've also got some here in Paris, as well as art in the streets. There are new perspectives on Brazil here at Paris's Maison de la Photo. The gallery is presenting the work of three Brazilian photographers, including documentary, mm. candid street snaps, and colorful collage. There's also a show dedicated to French artist Marcel Gautreau, who spent more than 40 years in Brazil, defining the graphic image of the futuristic capital, Brasilia. Vic Muniz is among the photographers on show. We sat down with one of Brazil's most successful contemporary artists to talk about the recent political upheaval in the country. Uh, right after the Olympics, uh, we're going to wake up and finally wake up to the realities that we have to deal with. And I don't think it's a bad thing, you know. I think uh, we've, uh, uh, we live in a country that deals with really harsh realities 
And sometimes it's better just to, to wake up to them, to actually face them, than to actually to, to pretend that we're living in, in Wonderland. Now, people like Vic Muniz have mentioned the need for political debate. Do you think the arts can contribute to the political debate in the country? Yes, of course. And with the political crisis we've been uh, passing through, uh, the, the artistic um, class, I would say, they were very active. Uh, one of the examples is uh, the new temporary president, Michel Temer. One of his first decisions was to shut down the Ministry of Culture. And there were many manifestations uh, all around the country from musicians, theater, and they finally got, uh, got him to go back in his decision and reopen the ministry. There's this certain visual identity that's associated with Brazil. We've seen it in the photography on show, but also people's imagination of color, samba, beaches, <clears throat> that old cliche. Do you yes. think people outside the country have an accurate idea of the reality? The cliché is very strong. It's been, it's been uh, propagated uh, f by Hollywood since the 50s with the image of Carmen Miranda and the Banana Republic and all that imagery of tropical... It, it does exist, all that culture exists, but we have a lot more than that. We have different traditions from uh, Africa, African heritage, native Brazilian and European, and the mix of all that with a lot of modernity. So it's important to see exhibitions like those ones that show that we, we're not only samba and soccer. Indeed. Now, one of the unfortunate cliches surrounding Brazil is violence, guns, drugs and abject poverty. The image of the favelas is often overwhelmingly bleak. But these neighborhoods are also home to a generation of entrepreneurial young people working together to improve their communities. It's a creative approach to an absence of infrastructure and investment, and one that impressed two French journalists who decided to publish a book documenting this favela generation. We went to meet its authors at its launch in Paris. An organic catering company, a fashion label, pressure groups tackling immigration and LGBT rights, just some of the social initiatives and startups flourishing in Brazil. Projects happening far from the beaches and the cities, flagged up by a book called Favela Generation. Alexandre Gimayo provided the visuals which illustrate these positive changes in the country's hinterland. The graphic artist called on his background in journalism and comics to get the message across. He says Brazil needs to move on from its beach and carnival image to show that its youth is pragmatic and progressive. There are solutions and initiatives from art and culture which are really working in these areas. There's a very artistic and creative generation that needs to be heard and needs to be put in the spotlight. The idea for Favela Generation came about when French journalists Hélène and Marie were reporting on violence, corruption and social deprivation in, in Brazil's favelas. Yet they also discovered an entrepreneurial spirit in these communities. For example, I saw a former maid create her own cooking and catering business. She started with a couple of knives and chopping boards, nothing more. Now she has a brand, she employs people and she travels to other countries. Others are now candidates for local elections after just six months. In cities like Rio and Sao Paulo, favelas can account for up to a quarter of the urban population. And although positive initiatives are taking root, police violence and drug trafficking are still heavily associated with these areas, something Alexandre has tackled in earlier work with local musicians. Nova operação policial leva a uma de um inocente. Deixa a criança ferida, com bala perdida, mais punição como medida. Revelando incompetência, tem o complemento... For him, the most important development is that once marginalized voices are now being heard. I always thought to myself, I don't just want to draw superheroes, I want to use my comic drawing to highlight social problems in Brazil, to shine a light on the issues we really need to resolve and make some progress on here. So art has that power to mobilize people, and graphic art has this visual power to raise these questions, which need to be debated, discussed and resolved. Debate that's all the more important as the country faces a moment of political turbulence, which has seen the Ministry of Culture significantly diminished and the future of arts in Brazil, including literature, hanging in the balance. 
Rafael, we can see from that report that independent artistic projects are flourishing without any state mm -hmm. intervention. How do you see the future of the arts in Brazil? Culture is, will still go on, go on, and mainly the street culture, not only street art as uh, when we talk about graffiti, but also street music and popular traditions. And there's a lot of energy in Brazil, and people like helping each other a lot. And everything that's in the street is very welcomed by the population, so I'm pretty positive. I don't think this political crisis will affect in a very negative way for this kind of popular culture. Mm -hmm. And many of the people involved in that future are this new generation. You've told us about a young artist who you're very interested in, Lineker, a musician. What's so good about him? Well, Lineker is a, very, is a great musician. He's only tw 20 years old and he's, he's been doing great uh, music with a very good quality. And I had the pleasure to meet him. We, we participated in the same uh, festival uh, this year. Uh, this LGBT week because he's also working on uh, gender themes uh, and for me he's, he's going to be one of the greatest musicians of our times in Brazil. Okay well we'll leave you with a clip of that. Rafael Soriani thank you so much thank you very for joining much. us today. This is Lineker's Luiz do Brasil. Remember you can get more arts and culture on our website. You can follow Encore on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Passei pra andar o cheiro Na Luísa, mas o Luísa do Brasil Que aproveitei pra dançar Até porque um tronco pra você Passei pra andar o cheiro Na Luísa, mas o Luísa do Brasil Que aproveitei pra dançar Até porque não Luísa, 23, salta em 15, 63 Luísa, 23